In this video, we're going to do a huge toys and clothes declutter. As most of you know, we've got a small house and way too much stuff. Because of that, my house becomes messy very quickly and I'm hoping that doing this declutter helps to minimise that and make things more manageable. I know from the comments in my previous videos that a lot of you are in the same position as me. And so I really hope watching me finally get it done helps give you that boost of motivation to get started and get through it. I have been avoiding doing this for months because in my head it just seems like the most impossible job. I am not a fan of decluttering at all. But come on, let's get it done. The sense of accomplishment we'll feel after this is so worth it. Because I find this task so overwhelming, I thought I'd ease myself into it and start with my room. Of all the places I need to declutter, this is the least daunting. And I just need to go through my clothes and my toddler's clothes. And as you can see here, his drawers are just in disarray. Everything's just been thrown in willy-nilly, nothing has a place. There are things he's grown out of ages ago still in there. And it's because this is a task I always put off until the last minute. Partly because I just find the idea of it overwhelming but mostly because I'm really sentimental and I find it hard to let go of things, especially little things my baby's worn and will never wear again. It just makes me want to cry. But I know it's a job that needs to be done and we've got photos of him wearing them, so they won't be completely lost. I am making a small sentimentals pile that I'm going to put in the attic. Things that are precious and priceless, like that crocheted blanket to the side of me. It was handmade by one of my aunties and it was originally Rudy's and then it was Ike's and I want to keep it forever. I was just trying really hard to make sure I didn't go over the top with it and try and keep everything. Because that kind of behaviour is most definitely in my nature. Anyway, I had an aim to fill at least one bag per person. That's one bag for me and one bag for Ike in this room. And that was at the very least. And then of course I'm going to donate them because they're all still of great quality. And it's nice to know that others will get some use out of them and they're not just going to end up in a landfill somewhere. I always try to buy secondhand myself where I can. You'll see that there are some clothes in there that still have the tags on. Those were bought by my mother-in-law. She absolutely loves buying for the boys and I couldn't be more grateful. We're extremely lucky to have so many people who want to dote on the boys. But personally, when it comes to shopping for the boys myself, nothing beats a good vintage bargain. Nothing wrong with secondhand at all. The majority of Ike's baby clothes were Rudy's hand-me-downs and that just makes them all the more special to me. Honestly, I am obsessed with doing comparison photos of them wearing the same clothes at the same age. That's basically the majority of my Instagram page. Just side-by-side -side comparisons of my boys at certain ages. I love it. Anyway, if you're watching this screen, you'll see that I'm trying to pair up the million socks that were crammed in one of Ike's little drawers. I don't know how or why that started to happen, but whenever anyone had an odd sock, it just got shoved in there and it's been absolutely doing my head in. I'm sure you can probably imagine the amount of odd socks that are in this house. I'm just putting all of the sentimentals in that airtight bag there and it'll eventually go in the attic. But yeah, I've had a few people mention to me how they deal with odd sock problems, and it's by assigning each household member a colour and then just buying multiple of the same sock. And I just think that's genius. I don't think it'll ever happen in this house because we love funky socks here, but I just wanted to share it because I think it might help a lot of people watching. It's such a simple solution that I wouldn't have even thought of. Anyway, I'm just refilling the drawers with everything we've decided to save now. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've put the drawers in backwards. And it's because they've become really bent out of shape and they never looked neat. Still doesn't look perfect, but it's better than it was. And here's the before and after. So where everything was just crammed in, each drawer now has a purpose. So we've got socks, and then this drawer's kind of miscellaneous, hats, swimming stuff, PJs. And then we've got one big drawer for trousers and one big drawer for tops. And something that I was absolutely dreading turned out to be really simple. Starting on one of the smaller areas spurred me on to carry on and then start on my clothes. While I was doing this though, the boys were playing in here. <laughs> Don't worry, they were being supervised by Charlie. But if you've seen my video, The Struggles of Maintaining a Tidy Home, I talk about what it's like starting a project like decluttering and its knock-on effect on the rest of the house. Personally, and it might just be me, but if I take the time out to give one area of the house extra attention or a deep clean or maybe start a project, nine out of ten times the rest of the house suffers. And it can leave you wondering how anybody else keeps on top of things. I'm working on learning to reframe my perspective on it though, and that's been really helping. For example, where I would have thought, this house is always trashed, I'm constantly cleaning up. Or what might people think if they turned up unannounced? I now remind myself I am living the life that I dreamed of. For as long as I can remember, I wanted kids and a chaotic, busy, loving home. 
And now every day I get to wake up to my kids absolutely loving their lives, utilising their space and playing with their toys and feeling totally at home in the life I made for them. Yes, at times it can get stressful and overwhelming and feel like the cleaning up is never ending. But the thing is, it will end. One day they'll have grown up and moved out and I know myself well enough to know that I will deeply regret it if I spend all of my time that I have with my boys stressed and agitated over mess. So I figured I'd got two choices. Carry on fighting a losing battle because the mess, the toys, the laundry. God, the never ending laundry, which I'm currently sorting through here, by the way. It's been so long since we got to the bottom of that laundry pile that half the stuff has been grown out of. But yeah, those tasks right now aren't going anywhere. So I had the two choices. Fight tooth and nail to gain control over things that just aren't in my control. Or relax and focus on the things that are in my control. And those things are my mindset and how I view the situation. And the amount of things I have to deal with each day. I can reduce my mental and physical load by getting rid of the amount of things we have in this house. And I've made that my mission. Anything outside of that that stresses me out, I'm no longer making it my business. My mental health and the mental health of my kids and my partner, that's my main priority. So if that means my house is messy quite often, then so be it. It won't be this chaotic forever, but I'm learning to love it while it is. And an added bonus, I get to make these videos for you. While I'm sorting through my messes, that can be company and motivation to those who are struggling with theirs. And I absolutely love that. I feel so blessed to be in this position. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, I decided to sort through the laundry basket next. Our laundry basket is constantly overflowing, and I mean constantly. And I'd say we actually wear probably a tenth of what's in there. It's basically just me washing and rewashing the top layer. And that's something I desperately wanted to change. For my mental health, if nothing else. I am sick of walking up the stairs and seeing clothes everywhere. As I said, the laundry basket is always overflowing. There's constantly clothes that need to be put away all over the house, on the stairs. And it's because we do not have the storage space for the amount of clothes that we own. You'll see what I mean in a minute when I show you the limited amount of space I have for my clothes. Basically, I keep all of my clothes in drawers under the bed. Charlie has a little wardrobe in the bedroom. Ike has that canvas set of drawers that you've just seen. And Rudy has a set of drawers in the boys' bedroom. It's just something we have to deal with with all four of us living in such a small space. I cannot complain though, I absolutely love our little home. I love that we're all so close to each other and we can hear each other from the other rooms. I grew up in quite a big house compared to this. Don't get me wrong, I loved that too. But it could feel quite separate when everyone was in their own little part of the house. Me and each of my siblings had our own bedrooms, which is a good thing when they get a bit older. But I feel like while my kids are small, it's such a bonding experience to share a bedroom and to be in close proximity to each other. I just, I love it. Anyway, here's the situation with my clothes. Again, everything's just smushed in willy-nilly, nothing has a place. It's just ridiculous and chaotic. So I wanted to sort that. My issue is this though. I still own a lot of clothes that I wore before I had Rudy. That's my seven-year-old. They don't fit me. I haven't worn them in almost a decade. I'm about four or five sizes bigger than I was back then. But I still have this voice in the back of my head, like a little gremlin on my shoulder going, don't throw them away, don't throw them away. You'll fit back into them soon. Save them. Which is not helpful at all. But the clothes are just so lovely. Please tell me I'm not the only one that does that. But yeah, I tried to be really cutthroat with my clothes this time. I did save a few items because yeah... I'm going to be honest, I do want to be able to fit back into them one day. But at the same time, I needed to be realistic and have room for the clothes I actually can wear. Which at the minute is basically Charlie's t-shirts and leggings. Those of you that have been watching for a while now, you'll know that I am implementing changes towards a more healthier lifestyle. I've been trying to cut down massively on the sugary drinks because that's my main issue. I drink all of my calories. I'm not perfect, I do still have bad days, but I'm getting there. In the last month, I've also started something called intermittent fasting. Not just for weight loss, but for overall health. For those of you that don't know what that is, it's basically you have an eating window and a fasting window. And you reap different benefits based on how long you fast for. But it's meant to help with a myriad of things like um, insulin resistance, fat loss, obviously. But also, depending on how long the fast is, cell repair and mental clarity and just all sorts. And I'm absolutely loving it. I've been loving listening to Dr Mindy Peltz. She wrote the book Fast Like a Girl. 
And that's all about how, um, as women, our physiology is different and that means we need to fast in a different way. On a timeline based around our cycles and where we are in our cycles. It's so, so interesting. I could talk about it for hours. I won't. I'm not going to bore you. But I do like to keep you all updated on the little happenings of my day-to-day life. By the way, I do really need to add a disclaimer here for people who have no idea what intermittent fasting is. It is not starving yourself for prolonged periods of time at all. Please don't think that that's what it is. It's a healthy and sustainable lifestyle change. I've been struggling for years since having my sons to try and get to a healthy weight. And traditional methods like certain diets and calorie deficits, they've really just made me miserable. Plus, a lot of the time, those things just aren't sustainable. They change your metabolism, your metabolism adjusts, and you keep having to restrict and restrict, and that is not how I want to live my life. I want to be able to live and experience things to the full and indulge sometimes when I want to. And yeah, I think I've found the right method for me in intermittent fasting. I'm so excited about it. So I just thought I'd put some people onto that if it sounds like it might be up your alley. I recommend looking up Dr Mindy Peltz and obviously please do your research beforehand. This thing isn't for everybody. It's not safe for people with certain health problems like type 1 diabetes. Anyway, if I've bored you to death there, I am so so sorry. I'm going to stop talking about it now. And now I've sifted through all of the laundry and all of my drawers and I'm putting everything back in. By the way, do you love how Ike's been asleep for most of this? Bless him. It actually turned out to be such a lovely day. Ike was sleeping next to me, Rudy was playing in his bedroom, and I was re-watching old episodes of Modern Family. So cosy. But back to what I was saying, I did one drawer for dressy kind of things, going out stuff, another drawer for my work uniform, and in that drawer I also put like jumpers and cardigans, just because I didn't have any other place for them. The next drawer was PJs and underwear, and the last drawer was all my casual stuff, like my t-shirts and my leggings i.e. the only drawer that matters, that and the PJ drawer. Anyway, we're just over halfway through this video and if you're still watching at this point, I wanted to take the time out to thank you from the bottom of my heart. The fact that you're enjoying the videos and listening to me ramble on, it just makes me so happy. When I started this account in January, I never could have imagined we would have got to 80,000 followers by this point. I am just absolutely blown away and I just want to shower you with my appreciation. For all of your support and your encouraging words. And not just the encouragement that's directed at me, but to other people in the comments of this absolutely gorgeous community that we're growing here. To see you all uplifting each other, it just makes my heart so full. And yeah, just thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for always watching my videos when you see I've posted a new one. As a lot of you know, I've spoken openly about this because I think it's important to be transparent. One of the things I hoped might come out of this channel was an extra stream of income. And after a lot of difficulties with AdSense, I think it's about eight months down the line, I finally received my first payment as a YouTube partner. And I am beyond excited. I remember in one of my older videos, it was I was cleaning my auntie's depression house. I said I'd love to be able to afford to do my driving lessons. I'll be 31 at the end of this year and I still can't drive. And I just didn't have the extra funds to be able to learn, and even if I did pass, to be able to run a car. But now, thanks to you amazing people, this is something that's actually on the cards for me. So watch this space. In the next few months, I'm hopefully going to be doing my driving lessons. And it's all thanks to you. There are not enough words in this world that will be able to express my gratitude. I said in that video, if you've not watched it, it's cleaning my auntie's depression house that one of the avenues I'd love to take this channel down is helping other people out, cleaning houses for free, but not being able to drive has held me back from that. So yeah, just thank you. You watching and engaging with my channel has started to open up doors for myself and my family that I didn't know was possible. And I hope I can continue to make videos that are worthy of you and that resonate with you and that help you out. I wanted to be able to show people when I started this channel that it's possible for an average everyday person to change their circumstances through social media and that it's possible to do it with integrity whilst helping others, not exploiting them. So yeah, I still can't quite wrap my head around all of it, but oh my goodness, I'm grateful. And if you're not actually watching the screen, you've just had me on in the background, at the minute I'm sorting through all of the socks. We're on day two of the declutter and my mum took the boys out this day just because I felt really guilty I wasn't giving them enough attention. And because while they were out having fun, I could get through the toys in this room. Because if Ike saw me going through the toys, he wouldn't let me throw a single one away. 
And again, because decluttering is an ordeal for me, I wanted it to be as stress-free as possible. It was a rainy day, I'd got my cinnamon scented candle on and modern family on again. All of those socks there I was picking up did not have a pair. So they were all thrown away and that's a massive bulk of the sock problem gone. And then I got to work on the toys. Both of the toy boxes in the living room have just been overflowing. And even when the room's clean, the fact that they're overflowing and you can't close the lids just makes the room look messy. If I'm being honest, since I've had Ike, Ike will be two in September, I don't think I've actually gone through his toys and done a declutter. And there are so many things here that he hasn't played with since he was a baby. And it was actually so cathartic to go through everything and watch the space in the boxes reduce. The boxes were so crammed the kids probably felt overwhelmed looking at them. And now they can go in there and have a rummage around and actually pick something they want to play with. And I was just feeling so positive about everything. I know decluttering's not the answer to everything and we're never going to be a minimalist family. My issues with executive dysfunction are still going to be here. The house is probably still going to get messy. But at least I'm being proactive about it and this is one extra thing put in place to help. Remember how I said this was going to be a really chilled morning? Well, Mushroom had other ideas and she kept running off with all of the toys. But yeah, it was still nice. Even just to have my scented candle burning guilt-free. If this is your first time seeing me, I suffer really badly with health anxiety. Something I never experienced before having kids. But some days I'm paranoid to the point that I can't function properly um, in fear of carcinogens. I'm terrified things in the house are going to make my boys poorly. I did get a lot better when my eldest son turned about three. Up until around three months ago when one of our family dogs passed away in an accident. And it triggered a lot of that fear. As a mum, you want to be able to protect your babies and to be able to control everything and to realise that life is mainly unpredictable and anything can happen. It's a scary thought to live with. So yeah, that's something I'm trying to process and work through at the minute. I have a logical part of my brain that says it's okay to burn a candle every once in a while. It's okay to use the laundry detergent that smells lovely. It's okay to indulge in these creature comforts that make life that little bit more bearable. And then I have the irrational part of my brain who sometimes wins and believes that even my worried thoughts are attracting negative things into our lives. And I think that's somewhat to do with being obsessed with the law of attraction from age 14 to 20. It's good to believe that you're powerful and you can do anything you want in this world. I just didn't expect that to backfire in postpartum. I never expected to be scared of my thoughts. We're very complex as humans, aren't we? But health anxiety is a horrible thing to go through, especially when it's to do with your children. You can never fully relax into being a parent. And when you think life couldn't be more perfect, you have that niggling feeling in the pit of your stomach that says something's got to go wrong. This is too good to be true. Yeah, I don't really know why I'm rambling on about it. I guess I just want anyone else watching who feels the same way as I do to know they're not alone. Anyway, the next day I wanted to have a quick sort out of my boys' room. I told myself when I started the declutter there didn't need to be a time frame in which to get it all done by. I went into it with the mindset, I'll get it done in chunks, and when I find it intolerable, I'll stop and I'll start again at a later date. And because I needed to clean this room up before I even started decluttering, I just found it too stressful. So instead, me and Rudy decided to just tidy it up, make it into a nice clean canvas, and then I'd come back and declutter when I felt mentally up to it. This is the room I have been absolutely dreading decluttering. Mainly because Rudy has so many clothes, they're overflowing into that little box on the toy chest there. And me decluttering this space was going to be part of this video, but honestly, it deserves a whole video by itself. And this video is already 20 minutes long, I've kept you long enough. So the final thing we're going to do in this video is going to tidy this space up, and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to work on in the next video. I'm doing a whole declutter series, I'm doing the entire house, and there is still so much that needs to be done. But now that I've gotten this far, I'm feeling so much less overwhelmed by it all. And I hope it's made you feel that way too, or at least inspired you to get some of your decluttering done. We did actually decide to do a little declutter of this toy chest, but we didn't get much out of it. It's not the main issue, to be honest. The main thing bugging me in this bedroom is the boys' bookshelf. It's so cluttered and chaotic, and it gets filled up with loads of junk really fast. So in the next declutter video, we're going to see what we can do with that and sort and reorganise the clothes drawers because they don't open properly, they're that jam-packed. And most of the clothes in there are things he doesn't even wear. That's all in the laundry basket needing to be washed. It gets washed, worn and thrown back into the laundry basket, never even sees the drawers. So I'll be attempting to get to the bottom of that laundry basket in that video as well. 
then what a relief that will be. Oh my goodness, I'm going to feel like a brand new woman. But that's the thing, isn't it? I'm just trying to implement small changes bit by bit that will make things easier in the long run. I'm never going to be perfect. I'm never going to have it all together. But I'm on a forever journey of self-improvement and progress over perfection, always. And I'm taking you along for the journey. And I really hope you enjoy yourself here every time you visit my channel. I know we've gone a bit deep today in terms of things like health anxiety. And sometimes you watch me purely to be uplifted. But I've got to be authentic. I know there were some people who needed to feel less alone with their health anxiety today. Each video I get into my flow and I listen to my intuition and I talk from the heart and I just have to hope it finds the right people. As every other video I've put out so far has and I'm beyond lucky that they have. We've had some judgments and criticisms but it comes with the territory doesn't it? And here's the bookshelf in question. Honestly it looks so pretty when it's all organised. And yeah, absolutely no coherence whatsoever when it comes to these drawers, but we're going to sort it. We're going to make sure everything has a place. I might put some labels on it to make it easier for my son. And I might add a few more storage boxes in this unit as well, just to help um, group toys together. Sorry about my stuttering there. I have been sat talking for a ridiculous amount of time and my brain's going fuzzy, but I won't be keeping you much longer. Before I go, I just want to say thank you so, so much for watching. If this was your first time watching, hi, welcome. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you're an OG follower, thank you for coming back. I hope you got to know me just that little bit more today. And that, as always, I hope this video was an easy watch and it felt like you were sitting with a friend having a cup of tea. If you got some work done while watching this video, amazing. Give yourself a pat on the back and I'll see you next time.